Okay, hi. Uh, my name is Josh Feldman. I am submitting this application into the Mobile Application Innovation Challenge. Um, I am a junior undergrad CSE here at the University of Michigan. Um, and I'm going to give you a little demonstration of the iPhone application that I have written. Um, I have opted for the purposes of this video to use the built-in um, iPhone uh, debugger for stability reasons, because holding a camera over an iPhone or an iPod I felt would be rather shaky. So instead I'm going to uh, demo it in this um, screen grab type view. Um, should you want to see it running on an actual iPod or iPhone, I'd be happy to submit a video of that happening. I just thought this would be clearer. Okay, <clears throat> so let me set the scene here. This is um, an app that I wrote for the University of Michigan Solar Car team, of which I'm a member. Um, and what this application does is it is a telemetry client for our solar car. And what I mean by that is it will display all kinds of important numbers coming off of the solar car, such as the amount of power we're getting from the solar array, um, the state of charge of the battery, how fast the car is driving, and a number of other things, which I will show you in a little bit. Um, I wrote this entirely by myself over the past summer, and um, it connects to the solar car wirelessly via Wi-Fi, um, and the entire application was written using the native iPhone SDK. Um, there's no gimmicks, there's no extra libraries that I use, it's all part of the uh, standard Cocoa Touch framework. Okay, so let's get started. Um, so the app is called Telemetry, which you can see here. Um, I guess these are just some other bad applications that I have in the simulator. So let's go ahead and launch the application. Um, and what you see here is the main screen. Um, and so once you have connected the iPhone or iPod Touch to the wireless network that is being broadcast from the solar car, um, the numbers you see on the screen will be updating in real time. Um, rather fast, actually. Um, a lot of these numbers are updated multiple times a second. Um, so in this case, um, in the power section, uh, you can see the uh, SOC of the battery. That would be the state of charge of the battery. So 80%, 90%, whatever. Um, Obviously, I default all these numbers to zero. That way, I know if we're successfully dropping or successfully getting data and not dropping packets, um, because the communication with the solar car is done via UDP packeting. Um, so SOC is state of charge of the battery. Um, array power is the total number of watts that our solar array is producing. Obviously, the sunnier it is, and the more directly that the solar array is pointed at the sun, the higher this number will be. Um, in the telemetry section here, uh, you'll see other numbers. Speed of the car is pretty obvious in kilometers per hour. Um, motor current is the motor, uh, the current being delivered to the motor, RMS of course. Um, so a higher motor current would correspond to uh, more throttle and therefore more torque being produced by the motor. Typically we ran at a maximum of 42 amps as full throttle. Um, motor temperature is the temperature of, well, the motor to make sure that it's not getting too hot such that it will melt down which happens at about uh, 80 or 90 degrees C. Battery voltage is very standard, the voltage of the battery. And we also have min and max cell voltage of the battery pack um, to make sure that nothing is either overcharged or undercharged such that we can damage the pack and, uh, well, things explode when that happens and that's what that number is there for. Okay, so that's the first page. Um, over here in the next page we have what's called the MPPT page. Um, what these are here are these are uh, wattages of individual sections of the solar array. So uh, MPPTs 1 through 7 correspond to different sections of the array, the solar panels on the top of the car, um, and MPPTs 8 and 9 correspond to the innovative concentrator system that we installed in our solar car's lower surface, um, which won us the Technical Innovation Award at this year's Global Green Challenge in Australia. Um, and so this is important because this allows us to see um, if certain areas of the array aren't performing as they should. Um, the power performance would reflect that decrease, and that would be an easy way to help us diagnose a problem. Um, and it's also interesting because you can watch the um, different sections of the solar array perform differently as the sun changes path in the sky um, from sunrise through noon to sunset. Um, and so that's pretty cool. Um, the next tab we have is a speedometer, um, and I have this page mainly so that people in our chase and lead vehicles can know exactly how fast the solar car is going and not have to eyeball it. 
Um, and so I have the speed of the car and the motor current, which, as I mentioned before, is torque um, as simple big numbers so that they're easy to read. And then we come to the last two tabs over here on the right. Um, these are, um, well, these are the interesting tabs. Um, and these are, are sort of the remote control tabs for the solar car, if you will. Um, the limit tab will actually set a speed limit at which the solar car can drive. So if I go ahead here and I tap 99 kilometers per hour, if the solar car's speed exceeds that, say because we're going down a hill and it's generating speed in that way, the car will automatically regenerative brake to try to maintain the 99 kilometers per hour that I have just set. Um, the speeds may seem weird. You may say to yourself, why do we pick 99 and 104, for example? And the reason for that is because we're trying to um, obey street laws. And so if the speed limit in the area is 100 kph, we're going to set the speed limit at 99 to ensure that we don't break the speed limit. Um, as you can tell up here, it shows the current limit that the car is set at. Um, and you can, of course, manually enter a speed limit, if you would so desire, to within a tenth of a kilometer per hour. And then we finally have the Cruise tab, um, which functions much in the same way as the Limit tab. Um, however, the Cruise tab allows you to set the speed of the car. So likewise, I can simply tap 105, and voila, the solar car will accelerate to 105 kilometers per hour on its own as soon as the driver of the solar car accepts that input on the driver display. Um, any change over 5 kilometers per hour, the driver must give consent for the speed of the vehicle to change. Um, and like speed limit, you can also manually enter a cruise command for the solar car. All right, so that is an overview of the telemetry application that I have written for the iPhone. Like I said, it's written in standard Objective-C using nothing but the Cocoa Touch framework. And um, that's it. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.